So we're going to go through the A5 reflection solution, starting with question one. Uh, there was a struggle to decide whether to use standard deviation or IQR, finding the mean, comparing it with the median. So let's look at question one. The dot plot and computer output shown below show final exam scores for Mr. Donahue's 25 statistics students. Um, you write a brief dis uh, description of the distribution of scores in this exam. So the center, what we know there are 25 uh, students, right? So if I circle here, I just came in from the right. You can come in from the right or the left, but I saw these points together and they added up pretty well. Um, and I can see that 12 points are here. So my middle point, my median, is right there, which is 89. So center is, since there are 25 students, it would be 13 students up or down. The center is at the median of 89. Now, you don't have to write this part out. I wrote it out so that you could understand the answer. Unusual features. We have several possible low outliers here. Okay, let me get my laser pointer to make sure you can see. Fire options. So these are all potential outliers here. All right. Now, if I do a box plot, I can find out if they're all outliers or not. Um, the shape is strongly skewed left, and it pretty much looks unimodal if we look at this as sort of a peak, as one peak. It's kind of, it's a dot plot, so it's kind of harder to pick out modality. And the range is from 96, 96 is the highest point, down to 65. So you could say the min is 65, the max is 96. All right, so that would be a good description. Would you estimate that the mean is about the same as the median, higher than the median, or lower than the median? Remember, when it's skewed left, it's like you're stretching the data out. Now, the median is still going to stay pretty high, but as we stretch it, we're bringing down the average. Have you heard of, oh, no, these scores are bringing down the average? And that's what they're doing in this case. So we know the mean is lower, the average is lower than the halfway point for the scores, the halfway point being the median. So uh, do any of the test scores qualify for this bonus? Now, you should be able to show the calculation for outliers, all right? So I'm showing the by hand method here. What I did is I listed every data point from lowest to highest, found my exact median, which honestly we could have done on the dot plot. Then I had to go find Q1, all right? Now, since I have an even number of data, we by the way, we exclude this median when we go down to Q1, which is the midpoint of the first half of data, and then Q3 is the midpoint of the second half of data. So this midpoint here, because we have an even set on each side, then instead of saying the median's 83 or 85, I take the halfway point between those two, it's 84. Now up here, the two middle points are 93, so it's just 93. So Q3 is 93, Q1 is 84, and IQR is 9. If I'm trying to find the boundary, the lower boundary for outliers, you take the rule of the Q1 for lower boundaries, it would be Q3 for upper, and then you go lower for lower boundaries, so you have to subtract 1.5 times the IQR, or the width of the box plot. So 84 minus 1.5 times 9, so it's 84 um, minus 13.5, I believe, yes. You get 70.5. So anything lower than 70.5 is an outlier, and these two data points are the only ones that are lower than 70.5. So we have two low outliers. Now, if you're doing multiple choice and you don't have to show work, normally you don't have to show this much work. You can honestly do summary statistics. So there are two ways to do it. You can do it using the uh, TI, the calculator, and I'm going to show you on the newer version. All right, and you can see the two outliers there. Or you can do it on Staplet. So currently, yes, you can use Staplet on my testing quizzes if I can see your computer on my blocks. All right. So, but let's. Um, I'll go ahead and show you next how to get that with the TI84, and then how to get it with the Staplet. 
Now, technology is an easier way to find outliers. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you enter your data in a list. So you hit Stat and Edit, Enter, and you can see the list. I've just actually already entered the data. If you scroll through, you can see all 25 points. How do you enter data? Well, you just go in a column, you put some numbers, and you just keep doing that until you're done. If you need to clear a column, you can go to the top and hit the Clear button, hit Enter, and then that clears the list. So I have all my data entered in list one. So if I want to see outliers, what I want to do is go second, staff plot, hit uh, come down to one, actually stay on one, turn on the plot, so we're going to hit enter, and you see there are a bunch of graphs available to us. This is an XY, uh, I believe this is more of a series, this one is a histogram. Let me show you that one just really quickly and we'll have default settings on it. And the way you graph it, once you do it, is you hit graph and voila. Now normally, by the way, it's off scale and you would have to hit zoom nine to make sure it scales properly. If you hit trace, it'll show you um, the min and the max is right at. So it sets kind of weird windows sometimes on these histograms, but there you go. And you can just use the arrow button to figure out there's one in that pile so that tells you the height of the bar and that tells you the values in the bar. But we'd, we'd rather go ahead and see a box plot. So let me go ahead and go back here, hit enter. And instead of doing the histogram, you will see, and let me keep it on, you will see two box plots. This one with the extra dots on it means that it's going to highlight the outliers. So you hit enter then hit graph. And you can see that we actually have two outliers here. If you want to see the values, it's probably pretty obvious, the two low ones. Well, you could have some repeats. So let me go. I hit trace. Trace shows you the value. So you can see here it's saying the median is 89. Um, Q1 is 84. It even labels it for you. And then that's just the bottom of the whisker. So that's the lowest value that's not an outlier. Then you have an outlier at 70 and at 65. So you can use technology to create these box plots and do it quickly. And this is how you do it on the TI-84. Again, create your list, stat, edit, and then you go to create the graph, you go second, stat plots, and then make sure it's set up there the way you want it. So here, you don't want the other plots on unless you're trying to do a lot of overlap and you hit graph. And you're probably going to have to do zoom and do this nine to get it to appear properly. Um, one other thing, you can also get your summary statistics. You just hit stat, calc, and then one of our stats, so that's all you need, hit enter. So, and then you're gonna click through. We're just doing it for that list. We only have one variable. You can see there's the mean, there's the min, the Q1, and your median, and all that. All right. Now here's one of my other favorite tools, it's Staplet, uh, staplet.com. We're doing one quantitative variable, a single group. So and I have the data. So the nice part is if you have the data in the list already, you can just copy and paste. And this was the test scores. So I'm gonna put that in there, control D, test scores. And we're checking to see for outliers. So we hit begin analysis. And you just basically hit box plot. Voila. Now, you, there are settings on these box plots where you can, uh, actually not on this one. I take that back. On some of the others, you can do some different settings. But the box plot's pretty automatic. It shows the outliers. If you float over it, there's the outlier of 65. There's the outlier of 70. And you can see the summary statistics right here Question two, I had trouble with number two, the question when the box plot was too advanced for me to figure out. I struggled with reading and interpreting, uh, like in problem two. So here we have two box plots. The box plot describes the distribution of prices paid for homes in two suburbs of Columbus, Ohio, over a single 30-day period in 2016. Which of the following statements is supported by the information in the graph? So we just have to go through and I'm gonna do false and true. So Westerville looks roughly symmetric. Uh, it's got a little bit of skew to the right, okay? It's a little bit skewed to the right. This one is not skewed to the right because you also got this weirdness going on, all right? 
Next one is the median for Dublin is around 325K. Yeah, I guess that's about right. And then Q3 is close for Westerville. This is Q3. It's close to 300K. I'm going to say that's true. Can't really tell means from box plots. Um, so, I'm sorry. The mean house price in Dublin is about $100,000 higher than the mean in Westerville. You can't tell the means from the box plots, so we're going to say that's false. I, I have no idea. Are all the points over here, like on this edge of the box? Is it evenly spread out? Are they all over here? So all of that makes it very, it makes it impossible to calculate means just by looking at the box plot. When we're using a box plot, we only use the medians. All right. Half the houses sold in Westerville cost less than the cheapest 25% of houses in Dublin. So here are the cheapest 25% of houses in Dublin. And they're saying half the houses are less than that, but that's not true. All right. And median. Okay. So that was for D. So the median for Westerville is around 200 K, um, which is right here. And it doesn't work because Q1 for Dublin is around 150 K. So that's definitely not lower than the 150k. The range of prices in Dublin was about 1.5 times the range of prices in Westerville. Now, the range we can estimate, it's about 600, or so for Westerville, well, we got Dublin first, so we'll do Dublin, 625 minus about 100, so about 525. For uh, Westerville, it's about 500 minus maybe 50 or 40, so it's 460k. So the range for Dublin is actually greater, but it's not one and a half times greater. So the answer for this one is B. Um, need more practice naming the values on the graph. So we're just going to go ahead and go to question three. Um, based on the box plot, what are the values of the five number summary? So the first number is always the min. Now it could be showing up as an outlier. Remember that first question with the 65? That would be the min. So it's not necessarily how low the um, whisker goes. It's how low your lowest value is. That's your min. That kind of makes sense. And your max is also the maximum value. So we know that our min here, that's probably around 20. All right. Um, so that says A, B, C, and D are good. Q1 is just a little under 40. So we know it's not B and we know it's not D. So now we're down to A and C, right? Q3, the median is under 50, so it's probably A, right? Q3, we can check, is just over 60. That looks good. And then the max is around 77. So our answer is A. I also struggled with understanding why a segment and bar graph would be the best way to show data on question four. In fact, I, I still am not sure I completely understand that. So... Which of the following graphs can be used to summarize the, summarize the data in a two-way table? Two-way tables are only for categorical data. So kind of like that police, uh, the, the stop and frisk program, that was categorical data. We recorded race and we recorded the reporting status. So it was like yes, no, and then we had Asian, black, uh, white, Hispanic, right? So that's categories. Uh, the St. John Wartz data that we looked at when we were reviewing for the quiz, that is like, so what was the response in treatment? Was it full, partial, or none? And did we use St. John's Wart, placebo, or Zoloft? Those are all categories, not numerical measurement. So um, we can only use categorical displays, categorical data displays. Dot plots are for numbers. Box plots are quantitative as well. So are stem plots and histograms. B is the only option. I am not understanding the variance of measurements. So from your notes for A4, this is like right in the page there. This variance for samples denoted by S squared with a formula. So that's for sample says S. Variance for a population is uh, denoted by sigma squared with a formula. The, sig the summation means sum of. All right. So the standard deviation, if we tell you the standard deviation is 5.4, how do we calculate the variance? We just square our standard deviation. 5.4 squared is 29.16.
And so that would be um, choice B right here, okay? Now, uh, let's go to the last problem. Mr. Lee has collected his last batch of 24 English essays. So we know how we have 24 data points. That's probably important for medians. All of them as computer files. He's curious about how long the papers are, but he doesn't want to be fooled by large font sizes. So he uses the word count feature. And then we've got this histogram for the 24 essays. All right. So how would we describe it? You can see they started first with skew. We can tell it's skewed. And the data was stretched to the right, so it's skewed to the right. Um, then they say one high outlier. So we only have two choices. They both say one high outlier. And we're going to go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. There's only one little, if you look at the height of this bar, it's one. So we have one data point in this bin. So it's either A or C. We have 24 essays, so we need to find the middle. So that would be between the 12th and 13th data point. So what I can do is I can start adding these. I'm going to add 2 and 4 and 6. So that gives me 12. So I'm not, the median is kind of between these two bars. It's between the 12th. Oh, did I say 125th? That's supposed to be 12th. 12th, 12th, not 125th. 12th and 13th data point. So it's, in, it's either in this bar or this bar. So we're going to say around 750. That's close to it. Personally, I would probably say, um, yeah, it's kind of average. So it's really hard to tell. It's like, oh, it could be right at 750. So that's one of those weird instances with a histogram where you might just give me one value for the median. And those are all the problems we covered. Again, remember that says 12th, not 125th. Oh, and the median's in the fourth bar. Well, actually, I'd say it's between the two bars. So it's right, it's somewhere an average between of the last point here and the first point there.